So I feel like we haven't talked about springs yet. We've mentioned them, but we haven't done any physics with them. Um, the first thing that, that we need to know about a, a spring, I want to talk about the work done by a spring, um, is that the force is a variable force. That's why we really haven't talked about them until now. It's a variable force. Think about springs. If you take a spring, take the spring that's on the page in front of you and grab the two ends and try to pull them apart. At first it's easy, but then it gets harder and harder and harder. Try and push them together. At first it's easy, but it gets harder, harder, and harder. Of course, at some point you can't push them any farther because the coils touch each other. But that's the, the nature of springs. The nature of springs is that the ideal spring, the ideal spring has a force that, that is proportional to, is proportional to the distance that you have squished or, squished or stre stretched the spring, right? So if the unstretched position of the spring is here, that's unstretched, then if I squish the spring, distance x, that means that the force that I had to uh, push got bigger as x got bigger. That's what I mean. So if initially the force was zero because the spring was not stretched or squished, after I push it this distance, at this point, I've got to be pushing with a force of kx. Oh, sorry, uh, k, k is my proportionality constant. But it's, the force is proportional to x, a bigger force. You know, at this point, it would be a bigger force. At this point, whoops, that had gone too far. Just give you the proportionality constant so I can be a little clearer. Um, and the proportionality constant is k, f equals kx. Okay, let's we'll leave off sine for a second. The magnitude of the spring force is kx. What that means is that as I make this x bigger, as I push in on the spring, as I push in on the spring, that the force that the spring pushes back on me with is equal to some proportionality, k, proportionality constant k times s. So this is the spring force. That's the magnitude of the spring force. Now, what's the direction of this? Oh, and, and we've got to talk about k. It's just a proportionality constant. It's just an arbitrary constant, but we'll come back to that. What's the direction of that force? The, the force that the spring exerts, not the force that I'm exerting. The force that I'm exerting is to the left, and that's the direction of x. But what's the direction that the spring exerts, the spring force? The spring is exerting a force back, right? The spring is pushing back, and the spring is pushing in the opposite direction of the displacement. And that's going to be true if I stretch the spring too. Think about that. Think about if I stretch the spring. If I take the spring and I stretch it out. Whatever, that was a bad, bad drawing. Um, but if I stretch it out a distance x, the spring doesn't want to be stretched. It's pulling back, right? The spring force is in the opposite direction. So you've got to be really careful whether we're talking about my force or the spring force. Yes, I am pulling to the right. I'm pulling. That's why X is push pointing to the right, because I'm pulling to the right. But the spring force pulls back. So the spring force, if we write it as a vector, is minus KX, because the spring force is always opposite the displacement of the end of the spring, the displacement from its uh, equilibrium or unstretched position. Is always opposite. Now, what is what about? So that's the minus sign. The minus sign simply indicates the direction of the force relative to the direction of x. K is a positive constant. Super important. Let's just talk about k. K is a positive constant. K is called the spring constant. It's called the spring constant. It is just the proportionality constant. It's always positive because the minus sign is take. It takes into account the vector nature of f and x. K is just a constant. The minus sign sits there. This law, by the way, this is actually called Hooke's law. Hooke's law, as in Robert Hooke, the person who was the uh, person who fought with Newton and who, and who Newton was talking about Hooke. And he said, if I've seen farther, it's because I've stood on the shoulders of giants because Hooke was a small man and Newton was talking about um, Galileo. Anyway, that's Hooke's law. Um, we're talking about K. K is, a, is called the spring constant. Now think about it. Let's say that you've got a really um, loosey-goosey spring, a really easy to stress spring, like a spring in your pen. I don't know if you've ever taken your pen apart and the clicky pens, you know, and you take that little spring out. It's easy to stretch and squish. It's fun to play with. Um, that's got a low spring constant as opposed to the shocks in your car. 
The shocks in your car are also essentially springs, um, or are springs, and they are really high spring constant because they don't, you don't want them to stretch very much. You want them to be really hard to stretch and squish. They gotta first of all hold up a couple of tons before they ever stretch at all, and then when you hit a bump, you just don't want them to stretch very much. You want them to stretch a little bit. Um, so K is very large. So K is, has to do with how hard it is to stretch or squish a spring. And k does not have a range of values like mu does, but obviously it's greater than zero, but it can be as big as you want it to be, right? So k for some kind of like your pen um, might be 10. Oh, what are the units of k? What are the units of k? If this is in newtons and this is in meters, then what is k? Divide both sides by meters and k is newtons per meter. So k, uh, you know, a nice easy to stretch a squish spring might be one or 10 newtons per meter. Whereas a really hard to stretch spring like your shocks in your car might be a hundred thousand or a million newtons per meter. Um, so they can really just vary and be anything. But this is a really hard to stretch spring like tons have to be on it. And this is a really easy to stretch spring. Like you can just, you know, play with it with your fingers. Okay. That's K talked about work yet but let me just do a, a spring example let's say that I've got um, got my one of those um, I don't know I think they exist you know a baby a baby swing or a baby swing but they have, they're springy so that you, you can bounce the baby up and down so I've got a baby in this in this baby buggy which is attached to a spring on the ceiling okay so yeah that's a baby and that's a baby buggy sure Let's say that, that and I'm just making these numbers up, this might not work very well. Let's say that we build one of these things and we choose, we go to the hardware store and we buy a spring with a spring constant of 200 newtons per meter. That's a spring. We, we, you buy them by their spring constants. You can buy them by length too, but they, you gotta specify the spring constant. Um, doesn't matter how long it is. Um, I just wanna know how much will the spring stretch when we, ha when we hang a 30 kilogram mass. Let's say the baby and buggy is 30 kilogram mass and we hang it from this spring on the ceiling. How far will the spring stretch? Well, how do we do that? Hmm, what we're gonna do is we're gonna treat, this is not a work energy problem. Just talking about, just really wanted to illustrate springs. Let's take the mass and draw a free body diagram. In the upward direction, we now have a spring force. In the downward direction, I've got the weight, or Fg, or Fw, however you like it. And that's it. Those are all the forces. We can apply Newton's second law, right? F net equals ma. Choose a positive direction. Hmm, let's make down the plus x direction. And say, therefore, F net x equals m a x. I guess I didn't need the vector signs. And then plug in the forces. M g is in the plus x direction. F spring is in the minus x direction. And that equals m times a sub x. Okay. What is a sub x? Well, we're asking how far will the spring stretch when I hang the mass from it. That's the maximum stretch. Actually, I got to be a little bit careful about it here. That's um, when that's the the acceleration is zero. The acceleration is zero. It's not going to be moving. When it's not moving, the acceleration is zero. It's not moving. The acceleration is zero. So um, it's in equilibrium. The net force is zero. So zero. Um, in order to answer the question, so therefore, m g minus f spring is equal to zero. Now we need to, ah, but well we want to know how far it will stretch. So we need to plug in the definition of F spring. So what do we plug in here? Do we plug in Kx or minus Kx? Plug in Kx because remember, when we plug these forces into Newton's second law, we're plugging in the magnitudes of the forces. But these are magnitudes because the directions are already out front, right? We already put in the direction. We know that the spring force is in the upward direction. So the spring force is minus a positive number. So this is a magnitude, kx. And so therefore, we can go ahead and solve. Okay, therefore, mg is equal to kx, or x is equal to mg over k, whoops, which is 1.47 meters. That means that if the spring was unstretched, 
and then we hung the thing on it, it's going to move down to here, 1.4 meters below where it was. That's probably a little too much of a soft spring, right? In the sense, oh, I actually should have drawn it. Spring is a bit too squishy. 1.4 meters is probably a little more than you'd want. You probably want a slightly tighter spring so it doesn't hang so far down, 1.47 meters. Any questions? Well, let's take a mass on a spring. Let's get rid of gravity by putting it on a horizontal surface. Make it a frictionless horizontal surface so that the only force on it is um, the spring. I guess uh, I need to pull it out some distance, right, in order to move it, um, but then it would be... Yeah, let's not worry about the fact that I'm pulling it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull the mass from x equals 0 to x equals x, so from 0 to x, and ask how much work did the spring do? So how much work did the spring do when I move the mass from x equals 0 to x equals x? So the spring does the amount of work. It goes from 0 to x. The spring does work. Magnitude kx, magnitude dx, right, for f ds. Right? This is f ds cosine theta. That's the definition of work done by a force. Um, so it's going to be kx is the magnitude of the force, dx is the displacement variable, and the angle between them, the spring force is in that direction, pulling backwards, while x, the displacement, is to the right, so the angle is 180 degrees. So the work done by the spring is equal to, cosine 180 gives us a minus 1, so we've got minus and k, pull the k out because it's a constant, we've got the integral from 0 to x of x dx, which is minus k x squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to x, or minus k x squared over 2, which can be simplified to minus 1 half k x squared minus one half kx squared. So the spring did work minus one half kx squared. Well, does the minus sign make sense? You should always look at the minus sign when we're talking about work because you gotta ask if it makes sense because it's so easy to mess up and it's so easy to tell if it makes sense. In this case, when I'm pulling it away from its equilibrium position, the spring is trying to pull back, is trying to slow it down in the x direction. And so it makes sense that the spring is slowing it down as resisting motion is doing negative work. The 1 half kx squared, if this was not an integral, it would have been kx squared. It, well, okay, I'm not even going to try to explain the half, um, but it is, it is the fact that the force, force versus x, here you go, this is the way to explain it. The force gets bigger as x gets bigger, right? So the work is just the area under this triangle, which is 1 half kx because right, this is kx, and so the area of that triangle is 1 half kx squared. So it makes sense. The 1 half kx squared makes sense. The minus sign makes sense. Work done by a spring, by the spring in this case, is minus 1 half kx squared. What happens if I let go of the spring, the mass at this point, right? The spring is still attached, and then I, the, 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 um, the spring force pulls it back. The spring force pulls it back. Now what's the spring force doing? It's doing positive work. So when the spring force goes back, it's going to end up doing, on the way back, it's going to end up doing plus 1 half kx squared. So the work done by a spring is going to be, when we're, when we're pulling it from equilibrium, from its x equals 0 position, the work done by spring is one half kx squared. And, and, and I haven't really spent time on that concept. The equilibrium, the place where it's unstretched, the place where it wants to sit, is where we measure x from. x has to be measured from that equilibrium position, x equals zero. So this x equals zero, just an aside, x equals zero is the equilibrium position for the spring. What does equilibrium mean? It's where the net force is zero. It's where the spring wants to sit.
right, where the net force is equal to zero. That's where it'll naturally sit. If I pull it away from equilibrium, it'll try to go back to equilibrium. And yeah, because it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's got speed when it gets there, it's going to go past it. And in this case, it'll oscillate. And you know that masses on springs oscillate. If I let it go, it's going to be pulled back to equilibrium, and then it's going to keep going, and it's going to go sh overshoot, and it's going to oscillate back and forth about the equilibrium position about the position where it wants to sit. If there's friction, it'll end up settling near there. So before I finish, I do want to talk about, well, what if I pulled it not from equilibrium, from somewhere else? Let's say that I pull it from equilibrium to x1, and I know I did a work to go from there to there. The work done was one half, uh, sorry, work done by the spring was minus one half kx1 squared. But now let's say I pull it from x1 to x2. How much work did I do? How much work, sorry, did the spring do? Oh, um, how much work I did is the opposite of how much work the spring did. If the spring did minus one half kx squared, I did positive one half k squared. Let's just leave that aside. How much work did the spring do? As I pull it from x1 to x2, how much work did the spring do? One half kx2 squared is the work done by the spring to go from one to two equal to one half k x two squared? And the answer is no. Hopefully you see it's no because that would be the work it takes to go from x zero to x two. So the work it takes from to go to x zero to x one is minus one half, oh, that minus sign, I left off my minus sign. The work to go from, one, from zero to one, so here, the work to go from zero to one done by the spring is minus one half k x one squared. The work to go from 0 to 2 is minus 1 half kx2 squared. So what is the work to go from 1 to 2? It's going to be this work minus that work, right? The work from any x1 to x2 is equal to, is equal to 1 half. The work done from 1 to 2 should be the work from 0 to 2 minus the amount of work from zero to one. So that's gonna be minus one half k x two squared minus x one squared. Not equal to, so this is often just a mistake that people make. It's not equal to minus one half k x two minus x one squared. That is not the same, right? That math is different. x two squared minus x one squared is not equal to x two minus x one quantity squared. Okay, that's the work done by a spring. Okay, so let's say we've got a bunny launcher. So we want to launch our bunny uh, because it'll be fun, right? Um, this could be a trampoline as well. It could be a dart gun, a uh, spring-loaded dart gun. But in any case, let's put a bunny on the bunny launcher. So we've got a platform um, on a spring with spring constant k. We'll give numbers later. We pull that platform down. So this bunny's sitting there on the platform. We we, we pull that platform down, we, um, we set it to launch. And so I just put it in place with some orange pins here. So when I, when I and we, we have now squished the spring a distance x from its equilibrium position. So when I pull those orange pins, it's gonna launch the bunny upwards. And so I wanna know, once it launches the bunny, how high will the bunny go in the air once it launches the bunny? Okay. So how high will the bunny go once it launches the bunny? Okay, what is the velocity? Uh, no, let me not ask that right now. What I wanted to ask is, um, how do we figure this out? We can do this. Well, the only way I know how is with the work energy theorem. Okay, so now think about what is doing work on the bunny. So you gotta be a little bit careful here, right? You say the spring isn't touching the bunny, the normal, the normal force is doing w upwards work on the bunny, and the gravity is doing, the forces on the bunny are gonna be gravitational force and the normal force. But the normal force is the spring force. The spring force is what's causing that normal force to push the bunny up. So the normal force is equal to the spring force. The spring is not touching the bunny, so we don't have a third force on the bunny but the normal force is equal to the spring force. So that is a reasonable free body diagram of the bunny. It looks a little ugly in that diagram, but that's okay. Um, <clears throat> so the work done the, is the work done by the spring, pushing it up, uh, plus the work done by the gravity, which is pulling it down, 
and that equals the change in kinetic energy, one half the mv final squared of the bunny minus one half mv initial squared of the bunny. The work done by the spring, so you can just imagine, take the platform away, just put the bunny directly on the spring and squish it down. Spring is what's pushing the bunny up. That's why there is only, right, there's not two forces pushing up. Okay. Um, so that is work done by the spring force, not work done by the uh, static frictional force. Okay, work done by the spring force. So how much work does the spring force do? The spring force does, right, it pushes the bunny up a distance x before the spring gets back to equilibrium, the spring force, the work done by the spring force, so as an aside, is equal to, well, we know it's one half, it's something like one half kx squared. Does the spring force do positive or negative work? In this case, the spring is pushing the bunny up in the direction that it's going, so it does positive work. So the work done by the spring force is what plus one half kx squared. Right, the, as we were setting the bunny, as we were pushing the bunny down, the spring force did negative work. But when we let go and we shoot it upwards, the spring force is doing the positive work. It's getting back the work that we took away. We pushed down, it was the spring force did minus one half kx squared, so therefore we will get back positive one half kx squared when the spring force pushes up. The gravitational work, as the bunny goes from its initial position to its final position, h, right, h is the distance, and it's going to be minus mgh, minus mgh. So the work done by the spring plus the work done by gravity. And what is the, what is the final velocity of the bunny? Final velocity of the bunny, zero, because we want to know how high it gets. Initial velocity of the bunny, also zero, because it started from rest. So, therefore, one-half kx squared minus mgh is equal to zero. So therefore, we want to know how high the bunny goes. h is equal to one-half kx squared over mg. I think that's right. So for those of you who like numbers, we didn't need numbers. So I just asked the question, how high does it go? And we can, now we can plug in numbers if we want. If I tell you that the bunny weighs 10 newtons, if I choose the same spring we did in the last example, 200 newtons per meter, and I say I set it at, point, at 15 centimeters down from its equilibrium position, then we can plug in. And actually, if I didn't make a calculator error, I get 22.5 centimeters. So the bunny doesn't actually go very high. It only goes right, or 0 0.225 meters, 0.225 meters. So it actually only goes 7.5 centimeters higher than where it started because right, this was 15 centimeters, so it only goes about that high, seven and a half centimeters higher. Not a very good bunny launcher. We gotta get a better spring. Right, how can we make it go higher? We can choose the spring, we can increase the spring. If we increase the spring by a factor of 10, if we make it 2,000 newtons per meter, now the bunny's going 2.25 meters in the air, and that's fun. 